I'm David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper, and today it's good to be with you again to talk about bees. I'm going to talk about the difference between cold-blooded and warm-blooded. <laughs> wow, I'm getting snowed on today. The last video I did, you guys really enjoyed. You, made, you left a lot of good comments about wrapping or not to wrap. And uh, it, that was, uh, I really appreciate your responses to that and comments. And as always, please subscribe. Love to have you as a subscriber on my beekeeping channel. Uh, today, I want to talk about bees. Are they cold-blooded or warm-blooded? And how does that affect bees for overwintering your colony in the wintertime? Now, what's interesting about understanding the difference between cold-blooded and warm-blooded, you know, I'm from the South. I spent my first 13 years living in the South. Born in Arkansas, grew up until I was a teenager in Tennessee. I moved to Illinois when I was 13. And so I always tease people, like a day like today, I'm like, oh, I can't stand this. You know, I'm warm, I'm hot blooded, I'm warm blooded, I'm from the South. I can't take this cold temperature, right? Um, actually, that's not the right way to word it, I guess. Um, I don't really have any southern blood in me that makes me uh, not withstand cold temperatures. We're all the same. Um, humans are warm-blooded. That means we can, we can maintain our body temperature. Now, obviously, I'm wearing a coat. That's going to help me maintain my temperature better and longer. But if we go outside, internally, we're going to stay, what is it, 98.6 for a long time. I mean, a long time, depending on how cold it is, of course. However, if you take something like an insect, a honeybee, they, when they become exposed to this temperature, they don't stay warm very long at all. And that's the difference between uh, humans, us being warm-blooded, and all insects, by the way, are cold-blooded. Insects cannot maintain their temperature. They are subject to their environment. So an insect, like a honeybee, their temperature changes with the environment. So they wait for it to get warm so they can get in the sun to get warm. So then they can utilize their muscles and their, their activities. But for humans, we're warm-blooded. Our environment uh, doesn't affect us. We're not affected by this temperature. I'm out here today with my face getting snowed on. A honeybee couldn't last 20 minutes out here and then it can't move anymore. Maybe less than 20 minutes. So um, cold-blooded insects then, they, they obtain their heat from their surroundings. They, they get their temperature based on their surroundings. We actually get our heat from our food source. The more we eat, the more energy we can produce. And the more energy we produce, the more heat we produce. And even if I get really cold and took my coat off, my body would start regulating and increasing its temperature by shivering and shaking. And if I get really hot on a summer day, then my body is going to sweat. Uh, I'm going to pant. You've seen dogs pant. Uh, they're warm-blooded. They try to stay cool. Now, let me tell you about bees in these colonies, in these hives behind me here. Um, I want to talk about them. They're in here, and they're making heat. And it's really cool how bees make heat. Actually, bees have a muscle in their thorax that operates their wings and their legs. Now, what happens is they can decouple their wings from their muscle. That way they can operate their muscle without moving their wings. So a heater bee can actually raise its body temperature up to 111 degrees Fahrenheit. And what they do, a heater bee will actually, she can push her head into a cell and actually heat up 70 pupa that are around her. Just one bee can heat up 70 developing pupa. And that's because pupa have to, has to be kept about 92, uh, 91, 92 degrees in their development stage. They're sort of in an incubator. So... They are producing some brood in here in the wintertime, and those heater bees are maintaining brood temperature by producing heat, by using their muscle in their thorax. Also interesting now, 
Think about this. So a honeybee, if I were to take one out and show you today, it is cold-blooded. But think about it this way. The colony is a single organism. It's warm-blooded. I, I would I would think it's warm-blooded as a colony because a colony can maintain its temperature. They do maintain their temperature like we do by eating food and staying warm. And so a single bee is cold-blooded, but as a colony, they're warm-blooded. Also, what's interesting about bees is they can regulate the temperature. So let's take uh, this idea of temperature and think about it this way. If you take negative 40 Fahrenheit all the way up to 104 Fahrenheit, that's the two extremes, negative 40 up to 104 degrees, bees can keep their temperature of their colony, as a single organism, between 91.4 and 96.8 degrees. They have five distal ends on their antenna, and they use these as sensors to tell them what the temperature is so they begin to heat or cool their colony inside. And they, they can uh, sense the temperature variation of a half degree. That's how sensitive their thermometer is on their antenna. They can regulate the temperature by observing uh, which way the temperature is going. So if it starts getting really cold, their little antenna ends tell them, oh, temperature is dropping, let's make more heat. And that's, that's just astounding. So what I want to show you today, uh, a few days ago when it was warmer than it is today, I'm so cold now. <laughs> I am from the south, I guess. Um, a few days ago, some bees came out. It was about 46, 49 degrees. Sunny, got pretty nice outside. So bees were flying out of, out of these hives here. And I had a pallet uh, sitting outside and bees were going over there because it had rained a little bit and there was water on some plastic on that pallet. I want to show you what happened because these, you're going to really like this video because the bees were over there drinking the water, taking it back to their hive. But the sun began to go down behind a vehicle that was parked there and it provided shade. That shade dropped the temperature or the environment of those cold-blooded bees below their tolerance. And they just were moving and then they couldn't move anymore and they just stood still. And they looked dead. So I want to show you these clips about what happened and then we'll talk more about it. Here's some bees that appear to be getting water that settled on this pallet outdoors. And what, you, what we witness here is that, you know, the bees, it's not that warm outside. It really is only about 45 degrees. And look how these, they almost look dead. And what's happening is they've come to get some water and they, they've gotten too cold. Now a couple of these have gotten trapped, but these are fine. But they they just gotten too cold. So we're gonna grab some and put them in the sun and let's see if they warm up. Let's take them over here and we'll just lay them on top of a sunny hive. They seem pretty um, wet, obviously, but I think they're fine. I think they've gotten cold in the shade. It was probably warmer when they flew over there. Then they kind of got cold after the sitting there drinking that water, they got cold. And now they just need to warm up with that sun and I believe they'll fly away. Let's just watch them and see. And here's three more. Take them and put them in the sun over here. Put the other ones. There's one that's in pretty good shape. She's just riding along, I guess. All right. 
so these are the ones that I brought over and as you can tell the ones are moving around a little bit better yeah they're definitely moving better I think they're warming up see wow they looked they looked like they were toes but they're coming back to life they were just cold all right so let's just watch these these here not really moving let's just keep an eye on them I'll come back in a few minutes well I laid a paper towel here I thought maybe I could help them a little bit by getting them dried off a little faster on a paper towel they're just sitting in a pool of water that I carried over you can get stung picking up bees so you got to be careful how you pick them up I guess Ooh, I wouldn't want to pick that one up upside down or it would sting me. Uh, let's try to spoon it over here, maybe. There we go. All right. Maybe they'll get a little dried off and one or two have already flown away, actually. All right, we'll check back in a few minutes. Well, a couple of them look like they're ready to fly off. Some of them are just starting to move. And it's not real warm out here. That's the problem. It's still probably below 40 right now. And so they're not able to warm up as much as they should uh, be warming up. They just got a little bit too cold. They were over in the shade on top of that plastic getting water it was sunny and they and they just got caught in some shade and it didn't take long to make their their uh, muscle their thoracic thoracic muscle very cold and mm -hmm. inoperable when they couldn't really move or fly that muscle operates both the wings and the legs so that shows you how cold-blooded bees if they get too cold if they get beyond a warm temperature from their environment, there's nothing they can do except they're not dead. They'll be alive unless the temperature drops below freezing because bees are made up of cells. And if the temperature drops below freezing, the cells will be damaged and they'll die. But if it doesn't drop below freezing for too long, bees can come back to life or move. They're, they're not dead, but they, you know what I mean? They come back to movement and go about their business once they receive enough of the warmth from their environment to continue on moving their muscles. <laughs> I've had people call me up before and say, um, all my bees are dead, they're laying out front of my hive. It rained and they were all on the front, then it rained and now they're just laying on the ground, laying on, they're just dead. And I was like, no, nah, just wait, wait until it warms up and then they'll be fine. They'll dry off, get warm, and they're back to business. Now, some of you may notice uh, it's starting to snow and land pretty heavily here today in Illinois. Uh, some of you will notice when it warms up and bees take a cleansing flight, they will actually die in the snow. You'll see spotted bees dying in the snow, the little, little brown dots of bees all through your yard. That's going on all summer as bees die naturally. But in the winter, it, it, it's more noticeable because of the snow. And you'll probably say, oh my gosh, something, something's wrong with my hive. Look at all the bees that are dying. Um, that's pretty common. And most of us feel that's pretty healthy. If a colony is strong enough to clean out the dead bees, we feel like that they're a strong colony. If they're so weak and, and not very strong and they can't take out the dead sisters that died and drop them away from the hive, they're not a very strong colony and they may die in the winter. So don't be alarmed when you see that. That's pretty common activity of a bee. Remember, bees don't hibernate. They only cluster to stay warm together. And uh, I wanted to give you those kind of fun facts about bees in the winter time. Somebody sent me another coffee mug. I'm absolutely sure that's what this is. Let's take a look and see what we got in here. Ooh, nice. Nicely wrapped. A nice letter attached to it. Nice little note. 
Looks like it's from Marcella. She's a B-Team 6 member. If you don't know what uh, B-Team 6 is, B-Team 6 is a mentorship program that I have where I have a little bit over 200 beekeepers around the country who subscribe to my mentorship program that gives you the privilege to contact me by my personal cell phone. You can text me, email me, send me an, uh, a text message. You can even call me and ask me what kind of questions, what kind of struggles you're having. And so uh, Marcella is a, a B Team 6 member, so thank you. She says, Dear David, this mug reminds me of how my bees look after I've poured powdered sugar on them. Hope you like this mug enough to have it on your coffee time chat. Well, I am. Thank you. Let's see what it looks like. It is really uh, shipped really well. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, this would have been great for Halloween. Oh, that's funny. Boo bees. So this is how bees look when you cover them with powdered sugar. They're all white. That's really good. That's funny. I like that so much. And it is coffee time. Well, you've probably never been in my radio shack. Uh, ham radio was a hobby that I picked up about a year ago when the pandemic first started. And so I've enjoyed being an amateur radio operator now for almost a year. And it's been so much fun making contacts with people all around the world. And it's been fun talking to people about how the coronavirus is affecting them in Italy or Spain. And it's just, it's really neat to have um, a way to contact people uh, beyond uh, my little world. It makes my world seem much larger. So it's been a fun hobby for me. I would really encourage you, if you're open to the idea, of looking for a new hobby, in addition to beekeeping, you should consider ham radio. It is a hoot. But what I wanna to talk to you today is about being open-minded. Now, the minute I said, hey, you should consider ham radio, you may have had a closed mind. And you might've said, oh no, I've got too many hobbies now, I'm not smart enough, too much uh, information, I'm not sure if I would pass the FCC test, and you know, all these negative thoughts may come and fill up your mind. But I want to talk to you today about being open-minded, not, not about ham radio, but open-minded. Because if you become closed-minded, you really miss out on a lot of benefits of life. You really do. I, was, I spent a large part of my life being very closed-minded. And um, being closed-minded is not a bad thing, necessarily. But being closed-minded just prevents you from hearing and adapting and embracing a new concept to you. And that's why a lot of people are close-minded. Um, I would say I was probably close-minded most of my life because I felt like I was right. And I felt like I was, you know, doing enough stuff. I was, I don't know, I was busy. I didn't have time to open my mind up when people said, hey, why don't you do this? Or how about this? I was closed-minded. I don't have time for that. I've got a family to raise, whatever. You know, you, you just have all these reasons not to embrace things. So for example, take science. This is a good subject to think about being closed-minded. Um, there were people who died because they, way back, they had ideas that now we know that are fact, but back then, they were heresy. I mean, it was just the idea of somebody saying, hey, maybe the sun isn't rotating around the earth. Maybe the earth is moving and the sun isn't moving. You know, stuff like that would cost people their lives because of closed-minded people that wouldn't embrace uh, science and new ideas and concepts. And so by being closed-minded, we really can miss out on embracing things that would benefit us. It's, it's really fun to consider being open-minded. Being open-minded is, and, and what I'm referring to as open-minded, is your ability to have your mind open and not just about politics or religion or philosophy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about everything, everything. 
Are you able to wake up in the morning with an open mind? With an open mind that says, I'm going to embrace this day. I'm going to learn about things today. I'm going to I'm not going to judge everything through my negative lens, but I'm going to be open-minded. And what I try to do it really helps me and help me it helped me make a transition. I stopped judging everything. I stopped judging everybody. I stopped immediately saying they're wrong. I don't believe that way. How could they think that way? That's not true. It would never work out. They're dumb, they're stupid. You know, uh, sometimes on my YouTube channel here, when I publish a video, instantly there's always a few handful of people out of hundreds that will judge my video. You know, thumbs down, you're an idiot, you're stupid, I hate you. I mean, it's just like a, a very closed-minded idea or concept that if it's different than what you want to hear or you want to see, then you immediately judge and sometimes judge that harshly. And I don't think that's beneficial. I think it's really healthy if we listen. And I think that's one of the first things that's good to do if you're feeling like you're not very open-minded. Start by listening to people. Like if somebody is telling you something that right now you don't agree with, you don't have to say, oh, 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 I disagree. No, wait a minute. I totally disagree with what you're saying. I think you should just, you know, be open-minded. And you may disagree. That's fine. There's no problem with disagreeing, but you don't really have to say it just yet. You could be quiet, listen, and begin asking questions. And word your questions in such a way that they're not disagreeable necessarily, but inquisitive. Like, it's interesting what you're saying. Now, let me ask a question because to me, I've always thought of it this way. I'm kind of interested in your viewpoint though. I want to hear more about how you would think about this because to me, I think this way and I kind of feel like you have a different view. Explain that view more in detail to me. And lo and behold, when they do that, you might begin to think, hmm, well, that kind of makes sense to me, you know? For example, I, I'm making a video, a new, I'm making you a video coming up in a few weeks about bees and do they get drunk? Um, because sometimes bees will drink fermented fruit and they'll, they apparently become intoxicated. It doesn't hurt bees. Apparently bees can drink, <laughs> uh, apparently bees can hold their liquor, I guess, you know? And, but when they come back to the hive, um, they're not allowed in in their drunken state. And I've been looking at the research about that. And when I, somebody first asked me that question, you know, if bee, can bees get drunk and do they, uh, are they pushed out of the hive or not allowed in if they come back from a wild night of drinking <laughs> and do the other bees not let them in until they sober up? Is that true? Immediately I said, no, that's stupid. That's silly. Then I began doing the research or looking into research and I began thinking, whoa, I was too close minded. Wow. So I'm looking forward to doing a video on uh, bees and um, their habits of drinking and getting drunk. That'd be fun. But that's an example uh, because if you just say no and don't look into it, you can continue to believe something incorrectly. So you got to be open minded and you got to listen. I want to hear I want to hear things. I want to be open minded and and conceive this idea that somebody is sharing with me. I have learned, I have become an entirely different person by learning the art of listening to you. Like, hmm, wow, and asking questions. Um, it's a skill that it's hard to learn. If you're the type of personality that I am, I love to talk. And so if I'm in a conversation, if I'm not careful, I will dominate the conversation by talking. And some of you are like, yeah, you, your videos, all you do is talk, you know. <laughs> That's why they're videos. But if you learn to listen and let other people talk and ask questions that prompt other people to say more, wow, you'll learn so much. But you have to be open-minded. Now, being close-minded about certain things is probably a good idea. I mean, I understand that there's things that happen to us, like if somebody tries to break into your house, you're going to be pretty close-minded about, no, you're not coming in here. I, I'm, you know, don't, don't, 
don't try to take the rare occasions and say that what I'm saying doesn't make sense or I'm wrong. I agree with you. There are sometimes you've got to have a closed mind, you know. I understand that. But I'm saying that in other parts of life that we go through and other areas of life, be open-minded. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's time for you to open your mind up to new concepts, new ideas, new philosophies, new hobbies, embracing, embracing new ideas. Maybe it's time for you to go someplace different. Maybe, maybe you, you're saying, I would never go there because I would just never bungee jump. Well, be open-minded, bungee jump. <laughs> right now, oh boy, that would be hard for me. I'd really have to work on opening my mind up to uh, dangle myself over some cliff or a mountain or a bridge on some kind of a elastic string and throw myself over a bridge and hopefully not crash at the bottom. Right now, I'm kind of closed-minded to that, <laughs> but I need to open up and maybe there's new things I need to experience because of the things that I have opened my mind up to, it's been really good. I've tried a lot of things. I've opened my mind up to a lot of things and I would say maybe half of them I fell in love with and embraced. The other half, nah, it didn't work out. I didn't pursue it. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it or it wasn't for me. And But I'm glad I was open-minded enough that I experimented with it and tried it. And it was very uh, a good experience. Another thing is, if you get to the place where you try something, you're, you're, you're open-minded and you pursue something that somebody else is sharing with you or showing you, and you it turns out you don't like it or you don't enjoy it or you don't agree with it, then it's so good if you can still appreciate the fact that that's where they're at and you don't have to judge them harshly. Well, I'm never hanging around with you again, if you believe that way. Or I will, you know, just don't talk to me anymore. Uh, and you get angry and mad. Um, it's, it's, I don't know why we have to do that. Um, I was reading some history, and you probably already know this, but Vice President Burr, this was uh, back, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the year. Um, mm, I don't even want to say what year it was because I'm going to be wrong, but, but Alexander Hamilton was the either the Secretary of the Treasurer or he had been, but he was in a disagreement with the Vice President. And believe it or not, they practiced pistol duels back then. Now, they were starting to become... Um, something that they were trying to get rid of. I guess it's when two people line up, they walk, they turn, they shoot each other to settle their differences. Crazy. In fact, um, Alexander Hamilton's son, his, I think his oldest son, was killed in a duel also. And so some of the states or areas during this time still kind of allowed this to happen. And it's a crazy concept, but Alexander Hamilton, you know, he's on the $10 bill, by the way. Um, he was in conflict with the vice president, so they agreed to do a duel, a pistol duel. And the story goes, and it might be debated, some of you are probably American his history buffs, you know all about this, but um, I th it sounds like Alexander never intended to shoot him, but Burr turned around and shot him in the rib, in the chest, I think, and, and uh, I think... Apparently, the way that they say Alexander, um, when he got hit, he kind of flinched his trigger and shot a branch above the other guy's head. And Alexander died a couple of days later. I think he was only like 47 years old. He wasn't really old. And uh, that's crazy, this idea that people would actually get so angry with each other that they would go out and have a pistol duel. I mean, Wow. You know, to, to think that somebody's anger or somebody's disagreement would cause you to harm somebody else, uh, that's not healthy. It's wrong. It's not the way to enjoy your life. Um, and that's why you need to be more open-minded. You can disagree, but if you can grow your ability to not become angry and hostile toward those that you may not understand, um, wow, I think that would really 
bring a fresh breath of air into your life. So anyway, I've talked long enough about uh, uh, on coffee time, but I just wanted you to consider being open minded. And I'm sure you're uh, wanting to share some comments about that. And uh, don't please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that be open to anything. Anything goes, you know, let everybody do what they want to. I'm, I'm not really saying that. I'm just saying for you to grasp the world that we live in, be open to see new places, to go new places, to experience things that you've never experienced before. Don't close your mind. And that involves people. Appreciate other people, appreciate their concepts, their ideas. Um, try to see them as a, a brother or a sister of yours and, and get along. And maybe along the way, it will bring a newness of enjoyment to life that you live. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a hoot to make. And I'd like for you to subscribe down below because that way you'll know when I make a new video, especially if you click on the bell, you'll get a little notice when I make a new video. And I'd love to have more new subscribers. Please subscribe. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.